song is to start नमस्कार गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल गुड इवनिंग डॉक्टर कलिता शिवी स्टार्ट या या एब्सोल्युटली शिवांग जी वी आर गुड टू गो गुड टू स्टार्ट यस सर यस सर प्लीज सर प्लीज ओके फाइन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई अप्रिशिएट मिस्टर शिवांग फॉर द फैंटास्टिक म्यूजिक दैट थैंक यू वेरी मच यू हैव केप्ट अस एंटरटेन फॉर द लास्ट 5 मिनट्स thank, thank you, you for thank that you. nice music selection thank uh, you i would like i would like to welcome the chairperson uh, dr shrinikant mishra ji he is the cmo of uh, hero motor corp and my boss and uh, welcome dr nava kumar kalita uh, you are welcome thank to this uh, series uh, first of all uh, being the moderator for the session it is a great initiative that we are raising public awareness on this important topic of uh, squamous cell carcinoma of the head and neck it is one of the most common type of cancers and uh, though there has been a lot of advances in the treatment protocols but still the prognosis depends upon the stage of presentation and uh, briefly uh, most of the talking will be done by dr naba uh, but before we start i would like to introduce uh, dr naba kumar kalita he has presented published uh, around nine scientific papers in national international journals and conferences has experience of working in state cancer institute guwahati assam for more than 5 years he participated as a guest lecturer on preventive oncology at mangadlai in 2018 presented various talks seminars mini teachings and micro teachings on various topics related to medical oncology molecular diagnostics medical genetics immunology metabolic diseases molecular and clinical biochemistry onco biochemistry etc at sci and intra college level he participated in various journal clubs held on recent biochemical markers in different biochemical markers in different diseases at intra college level uh, doctor over to you thank you uh, uh, dr shobha for your kind uh, introduction so and uh, first of all i would like to uh, give my sincere gratitude to each and everyone for uh, being invited uh, uh, for uh, inviting me to talk on this very important topic that is uh, squamous cell carcinoma of the head and neck so shall i uh, share my screen yes please sir yeah uh sir should i share from here sir because i have a backup with me uh let me try so okay okay no problem if uh, if 
Is this Shivang? Shivangji, are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am here, sir. Uh, so he needs to share uh, from his own screen, or you can do it. Yeah, that's why I requested, sir. Means uh, should I share from here? I have the backup, sir. You have. Uh, is this slide visible? Yes. Sir. Uh, no, sir. No. We are we are seeing you, but slides are not visible, sir. Yes. No. Then uh, maybe we can try. Shivangji, you can try. Close it up the screen. Thank you, Mr. Shivang. Yeah, thank you. So the today the topic of discussion will be improving outcome in uh, locally advanced head and neck cancer. Mm, what is the current landscape or the current uh, management that is uh, we are practicing? So next slide, please. Regarding the epidemiology, this uh, this does not need much of the elaboration because uh, of the uh, fact that uh, the oral cancer or the oral cavity, which is uh, you can see that it is actually behind the uh, breast carcinoma in, in in terms of uh, incidences or number of dates or five years prevalences. So it is right up to uh, it is ranked as number two behind just behind. Uh, breast cancer and all of the oral, most of the oral cavity or the oral uh, or the oropharynx or the lip, uh, these cancers are very much preventable. These are very much uh, due to the occupational behavior like tobacco and uh, or uh, we can see that, that a lot of smokeless tobacco are being used in India. So it is very much. Uh, uh, preventable so we so uh, we as a society has a lot of responsibility and uh, coming to the larynx or oropharynx so you can see from the, the data that uh, number of the incidence of the num uh, new cases or the number of dates in the first uh, couple of year or in last five years and the prevalence in terms of five years prevalence all are very much higher uh, with the head and neck cancer next slide So it is just being highlighted, oral cavity. Next is uh, number 11 is larynx and hypopharynx is ranked as number 15 in case of number of new cases. Noropharynx is also one of the important, uh, uh, important head and neck cancer. So especially in uh, locally advanced head and neck cancer, what should be our goal of therapy or the, what is the goal of therapy as an uh, oncologist? So uh, the whole goal of therapy is obviously to obtain a high cure rate while preserving the vital structure and function because uh, we have to go for the cure rate and also maintaining or preserving the organ preservation or the functional preservation is very much important because head and neck cap, uh, the, the speed swallow than uh, maintaining the structural uh, structural uniformity because nobody want to uh, uh, be in a deformed shape or with uh, with uh, impaired swallow or the speech function so uh, the treatment goal should be to obtain a high cure rate as well as uh, maintaining the physiology and the anatomy of the vital structure and organ preservation is one of the important aspect we'll go into detail so the, the organ preservation is very much it uh, it uh, it is uh, it should be our motto that the organ preservation should be done as much as practicable, taking into account in early to uh, early maybe in an advanced case also maybe we should go for the new human therapy so that uh, less and less surgery has to be done and uh, and organ preservation is one of the important goal. And the recent advances in treatment in terms of organ preservation, maybe we can go for the 3D uh, conformal RT. And also we can integrate the concurrent chemotherapy or uh, as a uh, concomitant therapeutic options, or maybe in the form of new adjuvant therapy. And so introduction of some targeted agent, which has made uh, really uh, the treatment of the advanced adenic cancer possible nowadays. Next slide. 
Regarding the concurrent chemo radiotherapy, it is one of the oldest form of treatment. It is prevalent for so many years. Next slide. So, uh, so there is some of the data that uh, uh, it is evident from uh, Dialdenstein DZ et al. So he has presented uh, the phase three randomized trial comparing the chemo radiation, why the chemo radiation is better or the dual modality of treatment is better versus the single modality, especially in the stage three and stage four locally advanced form of cell carcinoma of the head and neck region. So it's a, it's a data of almost 100 patients where they have included uh, oral cavity and oropharynx patients are maximum in the study. In one arm, they have used for the radiation therapy alone, 66 to 72 gray. And in another arm, they have gone for the concurrent chemo radiation. That is just five of you we uh, get to use uh, uh, day one to day four and day day. 22nd to 25, it's a four day regimen. And followed by the, if there is some residual disease, then the, the surgery along with uh, neck dissection. Uh, that was the protocol in their study, and they have found that the overall survival and the recurrence with survival both are as um, uh, some healthy data in terms of five years overall survival data. We see from the data that the concurrent modality of treatment, the concurrent chemo radiation is always better. So it leads to better survival benefit and better local control. Next slide. This is another data from our QZ uh, 9111 study where they have used the concurrent chemo radiation for organ regeneration for the advanced laryngeal cancer. So in laryngeal cancer, always uh, the organ preservation uh, is always our motto while treating the patient because it's an important and vital uh, structure and the function has to be very much intact. So the inclusion criteria was untreated stage three and stage four patients, squamous cell carcinoma of the glottis or supraglottic larynx with a a uh, fairly good enough eco performance status, uh, KPS score 60 or more than that, with uh, adequate uh, WBC and platelet. These are their inclusion criteria. And exclusion criteria was early stage disease and large volumes T4 disease. So, in one arm, they have used the cis 5 uh, uh, chemotherapy followed by the radiation. So, that is uh, the induction chemotherapy followed by the radiation. In another arm, they have used uh, radiotherapy with concurrency platin. And in arm C, they have just uh, single modulated treatment radiotherapy alone. Equal number of patients, uh, it was randomization. One is to one is to one arm. So, the primary endpoint of this study was to see. Uh, if there is preservation of the larynx or not after the end of the therapy. And the secondary endpoint was to see if, uh, the overall survival, this is preservable, what is the local control, local original control, time to progression and metastasis, and laryngectomy free survival. So these are their stratification points. Next slide. So from their data, we have seen that uh, the larynx preservation rate is equal with induction chemotherapy followed by concurrent chemo radiation versus concurrent chemo radiation. And if we see that the two-year local control, it is better with, uh, with induction chemotherapy followed by radiation. So that is one of the options that we also employed, uh, especially in case of laryngeal cancer where the organ preservation is uh, is the motto, then we, we can go for the induction chemotherapy followed by the radiation plus minus chemotherapy based on uh, the available data. And we have seen from the data that the local control is very much there uh, if we go for the induction chemotherapy. So they concluded that in patients with laryngeal cancer, radiotherapy with concurrent administration of cisplatin is superior to induction chemotherapy followed by radiation in terms of the overall survival but uh, the local control is very much there. If we want to go for uh, lo uh, local control, then uh, it is one of the option, but concurrency TRT is also uh, found to be uh, very good options or in this study, maybe uh, superior than the induction, uh, induction chemotherapy. 
So this is uh, both the options are available. We can use as per the patient's data or the patient's performance status. Next slide. Post-operative chemoradiotherapy, there is ample data to say that uh, post-surgery, uh, if there is some indication like your, uh, if there is positive margin or extra capsular extension, uh, extra lymphatic spray, there is, there is a good data to use the concurrent chemotherapy. So this is based on this trial, uh, Cooper J.S. et al. There he has... Uh, presented the data of about 416 patient high risk of recurrence, uh, head and neck, ascomer cell carcinoma post-surgery. What are their high risk features? Presence of a positive uh, margin. So the margin positive disease, extra capsular uh, spread outside the limb node, where when there is uh, features of LBI, when there is features of PNI, that is the perineural infection and the multiple positive limb node. These are generally considered as uh, high risk features, but first two options are very much available. It is it is uh, it is one of the uh, high indications of using uh, the concurrent chemotherapy. That is the positive uh, margin or extra capsular spread of the limb node. So based on this trial, they have seen the, they have taken the patients who, uh, where seventeen percent were margin positive and eighty three percent had the extra capsular extension. And by the disease side, we have seen that the oral cavity and the oropharyngeal cancers were maximum in the in their trial. Next slide. So they have found that if we can use uh, concurrent chemo radiation, then the disease free survival and the overall survival is really advanced, uh, is really better. The low original control is also good there. That, uh, so from this data, we can uh, we can see that the overall survival is higher uh, if we can use uh, use the concurrent chemotherapy along with the radiation based on this trial. Next slide. This is another uh, trial of uh, post-operative radiation with or without uh, concomitant chemotherapy in locally advanced hydrogen cancer. So so based on this trial. We can uh, see that some of the unfavorable pathological, based on some un unfavorable pathological uh, uh, signs like margin positivity or PNI or extra capsular split or LVI. So those patients were included. Next slide. And we can see from the data that the, with concurrent chemo radiation, the five years progression free survival is 47% versus 36%. And five-year overall survival is also increased, 53% versus 40%. Low original control is obviously, it is not uh, with uh, the concurrent chemo but the PFS and the OS, which is always our big target. So they have achieved that uh, if we can, uh, in those highest category of patient, if we can include the dual modality of treatment, it is always better for the patient. Next slide. Like um, about uh, giving the sequential chemo radiation therapy, that is the induction chemo radiation therapy. So there is data to say. Next slide. That uh, concurrent chemo radiation therapy has now been replaced uh, radiotherapy alone because we have seen from the data that uh, concurrent chemo radiation is always better in terms of not only in terms of low original control but also in the, in, the, in the long run in the form of progression free survival or operable survival. So induction chemotherapy is one of the options we can try where the upfront chemo radiation is not possible because of the locally advanced nature of the disease or, or where the surgery is contemplated by the organ preservation is it, uh, in its in doubt. Then we can go for the induction chemotherapy. Uh, with the cis 5 if you one of the regimen, so very toxic. So we have to be very, very careful. Long and personal 5 if you, uh, it is uh, it is known to be cardiotoxic. And so it has to be, so the patient selection has to be very good. And another option is the TPF, that is the triplet chemotherapy, taxin, cisplatin, dostexyl, cisplatin, and the 5 if you. It is one of the options based on some trial they have seen. And there is one study to uh, they, what they have con, uh, compared uh, URTC is 24971 text to uh, 323 study where they have uh, compared the induction chemotherapy TPF versus PF, it is uh, 5FU and platinum in local originally advanced uh, unresectable 
squamous cell carcinoma of the head and neck. Next slide. And they have uh, we have seen from the data that it is uh, it is uh, the three year survival and the overall survival is always better with the induction chemotherapy. Next slide. Regarding the targeted therapy, so so far we have come across the modality of treatment and locally advanced like the chemo radiation. So so earlier it was the single modality treatment radiation therapy. Then come is the uh, then the, then the combined uh, dual modality of treatment that is the chemo radiation therapy. Sometimes uh, presented as a much better overall survival. And when if you think about the organ preservation, then induction therapy can be considered in, in, in some patient based on the performance status. And regarding the targeted therapy, it is very much there. It has come in a big way because the expression of the EGF, you can see that the head and neck it is 80 to 100%. So that means that all the squamous cell carcinoma generally expresses the EGF receptor. Next slide. So it is uh, natural for them uh, that the uh, blockage of the ages for expressing tumor cell ultimately leads to uh, some sorts of benefit in, in case of uh, squamous cell carcinoma of the head and neck region. And we, we have seen from some of the data presented that the easier for our expression, it correlates actually with the poor prognosis. This is based on some trial they have presented in case of head and neck cancer is that five years survival rate is 81% in the EGF and non-expressing tumor versus 25% in the EGF and expressing uh, tumor. And in the multivariate analysis, EGF for expression has been shown to be an in independent prognostic factor in, uh, in terms of overall survival. This is preservable at the low original elapses. So EGF for expression is a poor prognostic indication, especially in case of head and neck cancer. Next slide. So regarding the anti-EGFR therapy, so there is very much uh, data to say, so some of the data of combining the cetuximab with the concurrent chemo therapy. So there is some of the data to uh, either phase three or even phase two trial. So they have combined the uh, concurrent uh, chemo radiation along with the cetuximab, but the trial has not been so uh, much successful because of mainly of the toxicity. So if you can uh, combine the cetuximab uh, with the chemo, uh, chemotherapy and the radiation, then the skin toxicity and the local regional toxicity is very much, uh, it, it, uh, it leads to discontinuation uh, of the treatment in most of the patients. So the, in some of the trial has to be stopped due to severe adverse events. And radiodermatitis and the mucositis is very, very troublesome, uh, in, especially in those patients undergoing the cetuximab. Next slide. So concurrent chemo along with the cetuximab is not a good idea. So uh, this is one of the trials where they have used the cetuximab and the radi uh, radiotherapy for the standard of care. Only trial to compare cetuximab and radiotherapy versus standard of care in case of locally advanced form of cell carcinoma. They have used in one arm uh, the standard of care, that is the chemo radiation weekly cisplatin. It is one of the options. We also generally go for the weekly cisplatin along with the radiation in, in another arm. Uh, they have uh, uh, included the cetuximab 400 mg per meter as a loading dose, followed by the weekly maintenance. 250 mg, uh, mg per meter square per week dose along with the radiation therapy. Next slide. So you can see from the data that in terms of local control, metastatic free survival, overall survival, it is very much there with, uh, with the cetuximab arm. And uh, toxicity was a great issue. And and some of the patients had to, uh, some of the patients had to discontinue the treatment because of the severe toxicity. So that is one of the issue. Next slide. So this is the part, uh, this is the landmark trial, bonus trial uh, about the cetuximab in cisplatin ineligible patients. So most, many of the patients, uh, uh, staging wise, it is not uh, locally advanced or it is very much uh, amenable to uh, radical treatment, but 
because of the age issue, because this is, uh, for the cisplatin, uh, most of the patient may not be eligible. So uh, in those patients, they have, um, especially with uh, uroparynx or hypoparynx and larynx, so they have uh, used uh, the radiotherapy alone for six to seven weeks, which is the standard of care in generally with the cisplatin ineligible patients versus radiotherapy plus weekly doses of cetuximab in, in that kind of patients. Equal number of patients were included in both the arm. Next slide. And you can see from the data that it is the graphs are totally separated. Next, uh, it is the median overall survival is 49 months with uh, the cetuximab uh, plus radiation arm versus 29 uh, by three months with the radiation arm alone. Next slide. So regarding the nemotuzumab, so this is the only anti-EGFR providing better data compared with the chemo radiation can be given with the chemo radiation. So cetuximab, we know that, that there is some of the trial, it has to discontinue because of the toxicity. So it cannot be used along with the chemotherapy. There is no any recommendation. But nemotuzumab, which is another anti-EGFR, it can be in, uh, used along with the chemo radiation in the inpatients. Next slide, based on some uh, trial. So coming to the nemotuzumab, it's a humanized uh, IgG1 isotype monoclonal antibody, which has a bivalent binding to the EGFR. And it, uh, uh, it is found to be very much effective in patients. Next slide. This is uh, one of the trial, best trial, so about the phase two trial of nemotuzumab in unresectable, local regionally advanced commercial carcinoma of the head and neck, where they have seen that uh, nemotuzumab provides survival benefit to the patients with inoperable advanced commercial carcinoma of the head and neck. So next slide, it's a five-year study of the Indian patients from uh, Kedwai Memorial Institute. And they have seen that the uh, overall response rate with the uh, nemotuzumab with the uh, concurrent chemo radiation is far more higher than the chemo radiation arm. And in, uh, and in some patients, they have included the radiation with the nemotuzumab. Those patients who, who are found to be ineligible for, uh, for the cisplatin, and compared with the radiation arm alone, and they have seen that the overall response is far more superior. If we can combine the um, nemotuzumab along with the chemotherapy arm, or maybe in, in the, as a single therapeutic option along with the RT. So the significant response rate they have achieved uh, by adding the, or combining the nemotuzumab. Next slide. So this is regarding the uh, overall survival data of this. So you can see from the graph that, that there is clear separation of the two, two, two graph in the, in the, uh, uh, from the couple of uh, uh, graph. We can see that, that there is clear, clear separation and five year survival rate is, uh, it is yet not reached. So, so it is a very healthy data to, uh, uh, to tell about the efficacy of nemotuzumab when combined with uh, concurrent, uh, concurrent chemotherapy. Next slide. Regarding the overall survival in the radiation group, so with radiation, single agent nemotuzumab, it is also the five-year overall survival is also higher with uh, with 39% versus 26% in the radiation arm alone. So there is, uh, there is also numerically higher uh, data. And uh, uh, so we can also use in some patients, in, especially in those patients, even if they are cisplatin eligible. But when compared, uh, or when can we give in with cisplatin, the effect is very much visible. Next slide. So this is uh, the TMH data, the Kumar Pravas et al. So it's about the phase two trial comparing the nemotuzumab plus cisplatin uh, chemo radiotherapy versus cisplatin chemo radiotherapy alone in locally advanced head and neck cancer. They have conducted and presented in ASCO 2020. Next slide. 
So in this study, the inclusion criteria was age more than 18 years, newly diagnosed treatment knife patients with stage three and stage four locally advanced non-metastatic squamous muscle carcinoma of the head and neck. Mostly patients are from, who had oropharyngeal cancer, larynx, hypopharynx, and oral cavity with uh, adequate organ function and a good performance status were included. And in patients with uh, nasopharyngeal cancer or the salivary gland tumor, uh, those patients when their nasal cavity, uh, those patients were excluded. And prior treatment with immunotherapy or radiotherapy were excluded from the trial. And uh, the, it was a randomized uh, trial, one is two arm randomization. In one arm, they have used the uh, nematozumab that is standard dose of 200 mg with cisplatin 30 mg per meter square weekly, along with a radiation 70 gray. And in arm B, they have used the cisplatin 30 mg per meter square, along with a radiation 70 gray. And it was continued up to seven cycle. Next slide. So primary endpoint of their study was to see for the progression-free survival and the secondary endpoint was to see uh, for the disease-free survival, local regional control, overall survival, treatment compliance, adverse events, and the quality of life. Next slide. So two-year uh, PFS, uh, they want to see and they have, uh, they have, uh, uh, included 536 patients based on uh, alpha of 5% and the power of 80%. So they have calculated that 536 patients will prove be necessary. Next slide. So this is just their enrollment and the allocations. So some patients did not meet the criteria. And uh, based on this allocation and the analysis, they have included uh, 268 patients each in each arm. Next slide. Regarding the basic characteristics, so uh, most of the patients were oropharyngeal cancer. So almost half of the patients were oropharyngeal having oropharyngeal cancer. And the stage 4A disease is where it is locally advanced. So we can see from the data that almost two-thirds of the patients were stage 4A. Next slide. And number of cycle completed in each arm, nematozumab chemo radiation versus concurrent chemo radiation is equal, found to be equal. There, that means the adding uh, nematozumab did not uh, did not uh, result in the decreasing the treatment compliance. Most of the treatment almost equal number. In fact, they are showing higher number. So that means that the equal number of patients could complete their uh, schedule chemotherapy along with uh, nematozumab on time along uh, without any treatment delay. And there is no any treatment uh, treatment delay or treatment discontinuation by adding the nematozumab. Next slide. Primary endpoint was to see for the progression free survival and the PFS was significantly longer in patient who received the nematozumab chemo radiation. And the cumulative dose of cisplatin, more than 200 mg, were achieved. And uh, in terms of two-year progression-free survival, it is 61.8% with the nematozumab chemo radiation uh, versus 50.1% with concurrent chemo radiation with a good hazard ratio, 0.69 and a p-value. So you can see from the graph that there is clear separation and good uh, uh, benefit. So risk of uh, uh, there is a decrease in the progress in preservable uh, in, the, in terms of uh, good hazard ratio, you can see that the 0.69, that means uh, that 39% uh, decrease in the progress in preservable. Next slide. And if any group uh, analyze uh, by stratification factor in all the in all the certification factor based on age or site or staging of the disease or the, or the technique of the radiation used. So in all the arms, the addition of nematism have led to consistent benefit across all the subgroups. Next slide. Two-year uh, disease preservable, which was their second uh, endpoint, it was 60.2% versus 48.5% 
with a good hazard ratio 0 0.7 month that we have already discussed. That means that there is a hazard of disease recurrence by 29% that we have already discussed. Next slide. In terms of local regional control, so local regional control at the end of two years was 67.5% with uh, nemotuzumab concurrent chemoradicinum versus 57.6% uh six months with uh, uh sorry 57.6 percent with concurrent chemo radiation with a good hazard ratio 0 0.67 next slide and the overall survival is also found to be uh, higher with uh, two-year overall survival is 63.8 percent with uh, nematozumab chemo radiation versus 57.7 percent with a concurrent uh, chemo radiation with a good hazard ratio 0 0.84 next slide so regarding the subgroup analysis of this uh, nematozuma phase 3 study regarding the hpv negative oropharyngeal cancer so they have found that next slide so two-year progression free survival, two-year local regional control, and the two-year overall survival is very much higher, uh, especially with the HPV negativity uh, status. In HPV negative oropharyngeal cancer, uh, two-year progression free survival was 57.2% versus 31.5%. Local regional control was 60.4% versus 41.4%. And two-year overall survival was uh, 57.6 percent versus 39 percent with a good hazard ratio. So we can see that the data is even more stronger with HPV negativity uh, or HPV negative oropharyngeal cancer. Next slide. So this has already been discussed. So they have been depicted. Uh, it has been depicted. Next slide. Regarding the quality of life data, so uh, they have presented the quality of life in patients with locally advanced but in the cancer treated with concurrent chemotherapy with cis nematozumab versus cis platin alone. So next slide, they have found that uh, there is no any alterations. In fact, uh, the all the in all the parameter they have done very well. Next slide. So the, as per the uh, URTC, QLQ, C30, uh, global health status. So they have found that the significant changes in the, uh, uh, there is no any difference between the two arm. And uh, there is some, in, uh, uh, there is some uh, low during the treatment period and at three months, but uh, it's, it improved steadily and plateaued thereafter. So there is no any much to differentiate. Next slide. Well, regarding the physical function, so at the end of three months, generally it will be there because the patient uh, will be undergoing the chemotherapy in that period. So there will be some or uh, some uh, functional uh, deterioration, but overall at the end of two years, there is no any uh, functional uh, Functional uh, dif uh, means uh, your functional deterioration in both the arms. Next slide. And uh, symptom control, it is also very much there with uh, regarding the nausea, vomiting, fatigue, diarrhea, constipation, insomnia. In all the in initially at the end of three months, the symptoms score were at the peak. So, but uh, after that, there is no much to differentiate. Next slide. Next slide. Pain and uh, all these symptoms improved. Regarding the mucositis, it is on the high, higher side uh, with uh, concurrent chemo radiation to, uh, along with uh, nematozumab. But uh, you can see from the, the all uh, grade three and grade five toxicity, it is somewhat little bit higher, but uh, it is very much manageable. Next slide. So that's all we have presented. So we have seen some wonderful data about the role of concurrent chemo radiation, where it way, why it is better in locally advanced head and neck cancer. We have seen the data of anti-EGF for targeted therapy that is commonly used nowadays. We have seen the result of induction chemotherapy also. And finally, we have seen very much Indian data that is with us uh, regarding the use of pneumatozumab.
with uh, concurrent chemo radiation. So thank you from my side. Any uh, question or query, I will be happy to uh, discuss. Thank you, Dr. Nava. And uh, any questions from eminent panelists and attendees? Any questions? I think there are not many questions for you, Doctor. Uh, thank you very much for spreading awareness. First of all, about uh, you gave us awareness regarding where oral cavity stands in terms of tumors. It stands just behind the breast cancer. Uh, thank you for letting us know what in what direction the oncologists think. They think of uh, preserving vital structures and functions while treating the uh, cancer patients. You taught us about concurrent chemoradiotherapy and you also uh, taught uh, us about the way radiotherapy plus cisplastin, uh, how it is effective in terms of laryngeal cancer. Uh, you, you gave us insights into induction chemotherapy and the use of uh, targeted therapy in head and neck cancers. Of course, uh, the, uh, the awareness regarding nemotozumab was great and uh, the, uh, the uh, theories and the papers published as far as Kumar Prabhash et al. is concerned, we learned a lot from the insights that you give us. Uh, last but not the least, the way you talked about mucositis as an adverse effect and how it is easily manageable. Uh, and you ended the session there. So there were a lot of important points and insights that will help us create awareness on this topic. People like you always help us prove that uh, cancer is not a statement. It's not a sentence. It's a word. And uh, people like you create hope. And last, I would like to invite the president, Dr. Shuniket Mishra, to thank you and close the session. So please. Thank you, Dr. Jati. Thank you, Dr. Naba, for <clears throat> sparing your time for this very informative session. On behalf of Ariana branch of IOH, I thank you for a wonderful lecture. And I, I hope all the audience must have benefited from your lecture and we are now more knowledgeable about these type of cancers and treatment part. So thank you. And if there are no questions, then we can close this uh, session. Dr. Chiyag Raju, sir, would you like to ask any question? Dr. Rajaj? I think there are no questions. So thank you. And Shivan, we can close this session. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Oh, sir. Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's an everyone present here. It's an absolute honor. Thank you.